And also the, the thing that, that was so heartbreaking in the film is she went to the hospital and she'd psyched herself mm. up to have something and then for some reason that she never completely... She then has to go had... back in July, so you have all that I time I know, my waiting. sister had all that when she had lung cancer, all that turning up at hospitals waiting or, you know, you just feel that you're... You've lost control of your own life. Yeah. And that you're in the hands of experts, yes, but the system's got to work in your... But I think what was really control. admirable about Linda is that she seemed quite calm to deal with that. I think you put things into perspective, because most people, if you lose an appointment, you go crazy, but she was kind of like, oh, well, you know, I've just got to kind of be calm about it. And I was re it was really admirable the way that she handled that. Because I think at the end of the day, what Andrea says, the NHS, to be able to provide that kind of care is just phenomenal for people, isn't it? And they're not always going to get it right but they do what they can so yeah. I think it's just about being upbeat but is your sister's all right now that's what she? she's doing really really well and we're very proud of her <laughs> We've, I, have, I have to say you, you, you might think why is she doing all the talking she did really well even to get her to sit down through <laughs> all, all of that because uh, Tina's a little bit shy she um, yeah. Um, Diane has got in touch and said, uh, listening to Linda discuss her side effects of treatment for cancer has made me feel better. Mm. I spent 18 months fighting cervical cancer. I know how she feels. Uh, Cheryl says a special thank you to Linda from me for speaking out about her lymphedema. Yeah. I have two small children with primary lymphedema. It's amazing that she's speaking out about that horrible side of cancer. We've had so many wonderful, wonderful comments, Linda, if, if you are watching. 